Hi, everybody. Welcome to Stamping with Melva. I'm Melva Peters, and I'm a Stampin' Up, uh, independent Stampin' Up demonstrator in Canada. And I wanted to jump on and uh, show you how to make a Z fold or Z fold fancy fold card. And I thought I'd play with the um, counting sheep stamp set and sheep dies that are available um, for free. Uh, with a $60 purchase in Canada during celebration. Um, they are so cute and I just haven't had a chance to play with them. And so I thought that the Z Fold card was a perfect card um, to show off um, both the stamps and uh, the dies. So uh, let's see, what was I gonna say? Yeah, so um, hopefully I'll get a few people joining and uh, I'd love for you to leave comments. So if it's the first time you're seeing me live, um, welcome. I'm glad you found me. I hope you'll take the time to subscribe. If it's not the first time um, that you found me, welcome back. And um, also hope you take the time to subscribe uh, so that you'll get notified when I do not only my lives, but also when I post my uh, video tutorials on a regular basis. So, all right, let's switch over to my desktop and we'll get started making the card. All right. So first of all, this is the these are the the counting sheep. Um, this is a stamp set with these adorable sheep, and then some sentiments. This is a rubber stamp, um, and as I said, it's available at the sixty dollar level during celebration. So if you spend sixty dollars, you could select the counting sheep as your uh, your choice. And then there are also the sheep dies that coordinate with it, so that you can cut out these the sheep. Uh, as well as this great fence, uh, a balloon, some clouds, the hat, a uh, birthday cat hat, um, and then a sun and flag, I guess. Um, so these are also a great option, also available for $60 at the $60 level. So I don't have a card to show you what we're going to make. So we're going to make this together, just bring in the supplies. So I've gone ahead and done some cutting in advance. So this is crumb cake and I have cut a piece of crumb cake that is uh, four and a quarter by 11. And I have scored it at two and three quarters and at five and a half. So that's going to form. So the, the score at five and a half forms your card main card base. So that's a regular size card. And then the score at at uh, two and three quarters, you fold back. So you end up with it looking like this. So you, like I said, you fold it to make your card base and then fold this front flap backwards. Okay, so then the other piece that I've cut is, this piece is one and a quarter by 11. And I've gone ahead and scored it at the same. I've scored it at at two and three quarters and then at five and a half. So these go on opposite. So this is this forms your Z part. So these go, so on the, this is the front of your card and it's got the two, the two flaps. Whereas with your Z, you have the long piece on the front and your two flaps go towards the back. So you're gonna again fold, fold it in half. and then fold backwards on itself with that flap. Except this will now be towards the back. So as I said, the long piece and then the, the two shorter pieces go on the back of the card and then this all fits together. So if I hold it in place before I adhere it, it will then open like this, you see? And I'm going to decorate um, this. I thought my fence posts were perfect. I'm going to actually bring it down towards the bottom. And I thought these fence posts that I've gone ahead and cut out of, of early espresso are perfect to decorate um, my uh, connecting piece. All right. So I'm not going to adhere this together yet. So that's kind of my two pieces. I also have gone and cut. Now this is the designer series paper. This is the In Good Taste designer series paper. And I'm going to use that um, as my background. I just thought that the wood grain was kind of perfect for a barn or farmyard. 
and it goes along with my fence posts or my fence rails that I go and have gone ahead and cut out like that. Okay. All right. So let's start putting some of these together. I'm going to go ahead and adhere my, my wood grain. Let's see, I'm out of, I'm out of Stampin' Steel. So we'll just switch over and use the multi-purpose adhesive glue. Have to get a new, grab a refill for it, but I don't have one handy. So we'll use this. This is just works as well. And actually when you're adhering, sometimes the multi-purpose liquid glue gives a little bit more forgiving and gives you a little bit of wiggle room uh, to, to just adjust your, your designer series paper or your other pieces if they don't get in exactly the right spot when you lay it down. A little bit more forgiving than, than uh, stamp and seal. All right, so that's that. Now I'm gonna to have to use the multi-purpose adhesive glue on this anyway, that would have, because it just works better. Now you wanna be a little careful with this. You don't want a ton of glue, otherwise you get it all over. If you're like me, you try to use just a little bit of glue. And these pieces actually are the perfect size to fit on these uh, folds. So I cut four, um, one for each of the, the two and a three quarter inch flaps, and then two for, for the longer flap. And then these will go on back to back. Oh, hi, Crystal. Welcome. Glad you found me. Okay, so this one will go like that. Oops. Look up the insides. I just love these fence, this fence rail. Yeah. All right, so now I can actually put this down. So this is going to go like this. Now I'm going to use a little bit of tear and tape adhesive on this just because I want it to be a little bit stronger. So just a little piece of tear and tape and you only are applying this to the two outside edges. And oops, a little bit extra. Oh, hi. Welcome. Dare to dream. Dare to dream big. Perfect. I'm glad you found me. I'm Welcome to my channel. I always like it when people find my channel and leave comments. So, Oopsie, that took the whole piece off. I don't want that. I just wanted to get underneath it. I could use my take your pick tool. That probably would be better, but just trying to get underneath the adhesive on this. Maybe we'll grab. Sometimes, sometimes it just doesn't want to. There we go. That's that one. So I'm going to put this fairly close to the bottom because I'm going to actually have my sheep coming out. So again, you want the long piece 
on the front of your card and the short, the, the two smaller flaps will go to the back of your card. There we go. And if you just fold this in half and press it down, it uh, just helps you line it up. Put that on, put that away. All right, so there's my, my card base. Isn't that cute? I think it's kind of perfect for sheep. All right, what are we going to do now? Okay, so we've got that done. So now I'm going to do some stamping. I'm going to stamp some of the sheep. And I have all three of the sheep um, from the this, all three stamps. And I love what Stampin' Up! has done. Sometimes when you get stamps that have like a fair amount of uh, space on the inside, if you press too hard on the, on the inside of your stamp, you get, you get a, a splotch, I'll call it, a splotch of ink. Uh, in the center. And so what Stampin' Up! has done is cut the centers out of these uh, sheep dies or sheep stamps so that you won't actually get that in the middle. There used to be, I can't remember what the stamp set was called, but it was, it was adorable pigs. And they didn't have the insides cut out of them. And often when you stamped, you would get some ink right in the middle and that always used to frustrate me so i'm really happy that stampin up has um has done away and, and cut that middle out now i've grabbed my stampin blends and i'm just going to do just a little bit of coloring on the sheet just to give them some dimension and i'm going to use the the um i'm going to use the dark dark um of the crushed uh, crushed curry uh, the crumb cake and I'm just going to go over these where the concept artists have actually uh, put some kind of lines and shadows. And I'm just going to kind of color. So I'm going to make my sheep crumb cake. I don't know. I think there are brown sheep, but my sheep are definitely going to be light brown. Kind of color. So when I use Stampin' Blends, I know everybody kind of does it differently. I actually always, um, I typically go over the whole thing with the, with the light color first. In this case, I did the dark, and then I'm going over the whole thing with the light. Um, so it's really up to you what you do. Um, you can do it like I just did it, or you can do what I often do is where I go over it, the whole thing. And I'm just gonna do the, his face in brown too. And I'm gonna do his hooves in, yeah, yeah, I guess they have been playing in the mud. It just kind of goes better with the card. I think you can make sheep whatever color you want. At least I'm going to make my sheep whatever this color. So I will do the hooves in all in the dark crumb cake. That. And then we'll, we'll do all of them. Actually, I grew up in a in a farming community, but there weren't many sheep around, so it was mostly cows. So I don't know. Not really. You don't actually have to. I mean, these are fairly big images, so I'm just kind of going over them, coloring quickly. When you do color with the Stampin' Blends, you do absolutely want to make sure you have something underneath you. Um, because the ink will bleed through. And in fact, it's expected it will bleed through. So definitely don't be coloring on top of your card. Otherwise, you may end up with uh, some of the ink coming through. All right, so I'm just going to go over this where it looks like it's kind of the shadow. And...
And then I'm really just going over and blending, trying to get rid of some of the, the obvious lines. Oops, and there's a couple up here. All right. My light stamp or my crumb cake is feeling like it needs to be almost time to replace it. I use this one a lot. It's one of my go-to colors. They eventually will dry out. So I just should tell you, so I do post regular videos uh, um, with my, uh, for my blog cards. So uh, you'll see, um, we've got some coming up this week. And then I do go live on a regular basis. So Sundays at 1 p.m. Pacific, which is now, and then uh, Tuesday night at uh, 6.30 Pacific, because uh, I'm based on the West Coast of Canada. Um, so 6.30 Pacific, uh, I do a sketch challenge on Tuesday nights, and then at 6.30 on Thursday night, um, I come on and do a, another live, another card. So hopefully you'll be able to uh, join me for some of those. And I'll just go through these, blend a little bit. And then I'm going to use the dies, which are here. So that one cuts that out. And I've got a little bit of um, post-it note tape just to hold these in place. I just like to uh, hold them in place as I'm cutting so that they don't, don't shift at all. Mm, here we got one. Again. All right, so that's that, that's that. Okay, and I've got a little piece of, I've got a scrap of Bermuda Bay. I thought that would go. Um, and I'm going to cut one balloon out of Bermuda Bay. So I'm just going to take this off. Camera. Let's put another piece on there because it's shifting a little bit. All right, I'm just going to take this off to my big shot or to my stamp and cut and emboss machine. I haven't said that in a while. And uh, cut these out. So there's my sheep, and now we'll cut out the balloon. Okay, now there's my balloon. Pull it off, and I can now take these off. pieces. And then one more. Okay, so I've got my sheep. And even with that, this one actually shifted a little bit. So I'm just going to take and trim this a little bit around. That's why I like to use the post-it note because sometimes it will shift even more if, uh, if you don't use that. Okay, so now uh, what I want to do is I'm just going to position these. And I grabbed some, I think, yeah. So I grabbed some window sheet. Um, which you can probably kind of just see because I thought maybe what I'd do 
Okay, so I'm just going to cut this in half. Is yes, I would take a piece of window sheet, and that way I can have my sheep who looks like he's kind of floating, um, be floating in the air uh, a little bit. So we'll use, um, I think I'll use some tear and tape adhesive on this one just to hold it in place. So like this, and then my floating sheet. I will just add a little bit of uh, multi-purpose adhesive glue, and we'll have him kind of floating in the air like that. And then there's my other one. This one kind of looks like he's jumping, so I'm just going to use a glue dot on this one. A couple of glue dots, let's see. And I'll just position him like this. Now, I have to put my I got him hanging up a little bit too high. I'm going to move, oops, maybe I'm not going to move him down. Was it? Oops, yeah, I can move him down. Just have him down a little bit so that I can um, put my balloon in. Oh, sorry, is it out of focus? I think because it's moving around a little bit. Apologies for that. Okay, I'm going to put a glue dot. And then sometimes you just need to make the glue dots just a touch smaller. And we'll put the balloon in this one's hand like that. There. All right. So when this folds, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Hang on. Should have thought of that. All right. Let's take this off. Okay. We're going to actually put this put this guy on this one. There we go. Okay, now let's put some more tear and tape adhesive on that. Okay, so we'll put him like this. And this one. That. Okay, so I'm just going to use a glue dot to put this in. The, the clear plastic are window sheets. So they come in packages of 12 by 12. Um, and you get them from Stampin' Up. Um, and you just cut them to whatever, whatever size that you want them to be. All right, so now when you open it up, you've got, got your sheep. All kind of coming out. All right, now I just need a sentiment. So I've got some basic white scraps here. So I'm going to use the birthday. I'm not sure who's going to get this birthday card, but I'll use the birthday. So this the sentiment says, so glad it's your birthday. So we're just going to stamp that onto the scrap. And then I'm going to fussy cut this out. Like this you can you can use a punch you could use a die um, but I'm going to just take and fussy cut it and then I'm going to use a dimensional I need to replace my dimensionals I've uh, I'm down to the I've used all of the the dimensionals off the sheet so now I'm down to cutting cutting the edges off to, so there's lots of uh, lots left, but okay. So now I'm just going to take and adhere that to the Bermuda Bay, and cut around it. So I'm not really worrying if it's even or not. That's kind of the beauty of 
a fussy cutting. And we will use dimensionals on the back of this as well and pop it up on the front of the card. Put a sentiment in here if you want it, but uh, let me just leave it like that. Now, the other thing that I have are some rhinestones, or not rhinestones, pearls. I thought some pearls might look good just to kind of give it, give it a little bit of an extra bling. And so we'll, we'll add a few, a few pearls here just to give it some extra. Right. That's my card. It's kind of fun. So like I said, I don't know who's going to get this, um, but somebody will. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I hope you'll give it a try and uh, just going to go back and uh, play along with that. Z Fold cards are actually really easy to make. Um, they look a little intimidating, but but they're really not. You just have to to remember. So on the the card, it's five. Or it's it's uh, it's eleven inches long. So score both pieces, the the main card base and your little piece that forms the Z fold, are scored at two and three quarters and at five inches. So uh, they really are quite fun to make, and I know that people uh, love to receive them because they they kind of you know when you open them up, they're kind of a bit of a wow. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you do have any more questions, just post them under the video. Um, you can also go out to my blog um, and uh, check out the cards that I post on my blog. Uh, so it is uh, www.stampingwithmelva.com. You'll find my blog. Um, and I do post regularly there as well. So I hope you'll join me on Tuesday night at 6.30 Pacific for another live. I'll be doing a sketch challenge um, that you'll be able to play along with. So thanks very much for joining me. Hope you have a great day. Happy stamping. <laughs>